Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest. And welcome on my annual trip to Idaho. One of my favorite places on this earth is in the central part of the state in an area known as the Sawtooth Range. And I get to come here every year to visit a memorial that we have from my mom. So today, I'd like to honor all of the evergreen that's here in this area and look at specifically the pine needle. While all parts of evergreen trees can create some form of color, I've never looked at doing anything with botanical printing and pine needles. So today on Color Quest, I'd like to experiment a bit and see what kind of echo prints we can make with the beautiful greenery of the pine tree. Such a sweet life, memories of you. So for the past few years, I've been coming here, but in an off season, sort of an October, early to late season. And I brought you along where we looked at things like pine and spruce cones, as well as the bark of the birch and also collected some leaves of aspen. I did use those aspen leaves in an echo print on fiber. It didn't bring much in the way of color, but it did have a really pretty leaf shape. One of the things about being here and seeing the aspen trees in the wind is that beautiful shimmery look of the leaves when they're all quaking together and it's really gorgeous. A couple differences coming here more in the summertime is that there are a lot more people so finding a more quiet place to film believe it or not is tougher and I always visit a few different lakes in the Sawtooth Valley. I love to go to Altaurus Lake and I always visit Redfish. That was an area that I used to go to as a child and I even worked there for a summer. But that particular lake is just packed now with people. So I escaped to the smaller off-road lake of Petted Lake in particular. And although there are a few people scattered about here enjoying the beauty of the lake today, it's not too bad, not too many people. I like to just come here and sit and look at just these beautiful mountains and just have some quiet moments of reflection and bringing you along to this very special place is a gift for me to share and i hope that you enjoy seeing the area maybe it'll be an area that you plan to visit or perhaps you're even from here another market difference is that when you come in october you have the most glorious change of leaf color and dropped against the, the more brownish and yellow tones of the background i love that it's the squirrel chipmunk sound so no gorgeous golden and orange leaves this time i'll miss that this year but it's all about the evergreen here as well. So pine trees, let's talk pine. So if you go back and look at some of those videos, you'll see that the color of cones can 
be all kinds of neutral colors in the brown realm and tans. Tones can also be easily collected as it comes down from the tree. We don't like to collect too many because our squirrel and chipmunk friends need them for their winter storage, but it's easy to find a handful or two here and there. For pine needles, I am going to be looking specifically at a very long pine needle that I have seen here. And I would like to see how it's going to interact with iron. Now, as you know, iron and tannins go well together. And I've been able to shift things like spruce needles in the dye pot from a greenish tone to a beautiful bluish gray. But I would like to see if these beautiful long needles could perhaps make a really pretty more abstract print on both silk as well as paper. I have been working with paper over this summer looking at my dye flowers and indigo leaves so I've got a little bit of that mixed in to the videos here right now and I thought why not see how paper can also work with these long pine needles. So in preparation of coming here, I pre-treated my fiber both in iron for my dye blanket, which I'm gonna use over the silk. I have a nice soft absorbent cotton, which is a great choice for any blankets that you might be using. So those have been dipped and soaked in iron water or ferrous sulfate. And then I also pre-treated the silk and another piece of the watercolor paper in aluminum acetate. All of them will work fine for silk, but I happen to have exhaust aluminum acetate, and that is a preferred mordant for plant-based fibers, which paper is. So I have all of my supplies ready to go. So let's go see if we can't find some of those long, beautiful pine needles and get to printing. I never got my words right. When I had you by my side, I fell in love with you. Hold on close for a Okay, here are my supplies, simple. These are the things I brought from home, except for these awesome pine needles. I mean, look at how beautiful they are. They are a bit longer than my paper, just about the same size as my paper, but I might do a different thing, more of a fun abstract thing. Not sure yet, we'll see. So I have my two pieces of paper, I have a piece of paper that's been pre-treated with aluminum acetate, and then this piece was the one that I soaked in fair sulfate. Sadly, I did get some kind of a blemish on this page. It's actually a piece of petal from my tie garden that was stuck in a towel. But you know what? It'll just add a little flair. And then I have this piece of absorbent cotton that I'm gonna to use to put around the paper like we did with the dye flowers to keep some of that moisture away from the paper to try to keep it crisp. But with things like this and leaves, we're gonna need a lot more time in the steam and we might need a little bit more moisture. So then over here, I'm going to try to also print with some of these needles on silk. Here is a silk piece tree with aluminum acetate and then my piece of cotton that I'm going to use as an iron blanket. It's been soaked in ferrous sulfate. And then finally, you may recognize these wonderful trivets that my kids made years ago. I'll be using those as my weights to keep things flat and clips to bind them so that we can put them in the steam. And this could take a while. This could also be something that you may choose to do actually in water. 
but that never gives you that crisp print regardless. Okay, let's get going. And one special note I just wanna say is that when you travel, you have to make do with what you have, right? You've seen me bumbling through that over the years. I have put together a little contraption for my steam where I don't have a steamer to raise it out of the water, but I'd like to do that. So I've just kind of jerry-rigged something to use a small pan inside of a big pot and then we'll get some steam rolling. So again, point of this is just use what you've got, improvise, experiment, and who knows, something wonderful may arrive. So we're gonna try this at about an hour and a half in the steam. I know that like leaves, this is gonna be hard for the essence of color if there is some to come. I am boosting it obviously, knowing that I'm working with the tannin in the needles and an iron blanket. So I'm tricking the system a bit in that I'm not necessarily looking for color coming from my needles, but more from that interaction between the tannin and the iron where I might just get some really beautiful black or grayish prints. That's what I'm looking for today. We'll see if it happens. These pictures of you. All right, it's been going for about an hour and 15 minutes. I got curious, took it out, pulled it back. Probably could have used more time, but now that I've pulled the paper away, I can't really redo it. But we did get some really beautiful, subtle prints on the iron paper. So that is really lovely. I'm gonna set that out to dry. That's sort of what I was looking for. This piece is the alum paper. I thought there would be a little bit more coming through based on having that iron paper on top, but looks like it didn't touch much. The print is very slight and maybe looks even a bit more like those beautiful pine needles. So we'll let this dry and then let's move on to our silk. So I like the way they turned out, especially on the iron paper. I think what may have happened is that there wasn't enough contact between the two papers because of the thickness of the pine needles. But regardless, I got two different prints, both equally as beautiful. Now we're gonna build our silk piece. For the silk piece, the piece of silk is larger than my flat surfaces. The two ceramic trivets that I am using to press and make that tight contact, which is necessary for any kind of botanical printing. But, I'm going to fold it over so that we have two pieces of the silk touching on both sides. You'll see what I mean once I start to build it. And then we'll end up getting duplicate prints and potentially a very different result. We're gonna be working on silk, but our iron blanket is actually cotton. And oftentimes I prefer the blanket to the contact fiber. We'll see how it works. Let's get that into the steam as well. We'll build and off we go.
right, we had, gosh, probably an hour and a half at least of steam. Then I was able to let it just cool in the pot. We'll see what we got. All right. Very, very subtle. Yes. This is like a hint. Wow, so soft. <laughs> yeah, they could probably have used more time, I think. But we have some on our piece of cotton as well, too. All right, well, very different. Not quite as distinct as paper. I think I like the paper better, but let's let them dry and see how they look. Okay, here they are, all dried. And actually, they dried a lot darker on the alum prepared paper. And it really is a nice light green print of the needles. So I'm happy that it dried darker than what it appeared to when I first pulled it out. And I still really like the iron one. Just such pretty thin lines and a little bit of, you can see where the base of the needles are. And it's got some variations of some grays and some greenish colors as well so i think the two turned out really very subtle and very pretty let's look at the silk now here's the silk and again it did actually dry darker than it was when we first looked at it wet which is kind of funny because that's pretty much the opposite of what normally happens but this seemed to come through. It has been a couple of weeks, so maybe it cured and just kind of settled in. But I did get a very nice, subtle print of pine needles on silk as well. well I'm really excited by how the paper turned out. It was what I envisioned, which is always a dangerous thing, but it's definitely something that I will probably explore more for my own art practice because I really like the shapes and the simplicity of it. That's where I go in my own artwork. So if you're out and about and have evergreen, try it out. Maybe try some different kinds of needles. I used both the fresh needles and then you saw that some of them were already brown. That could have made a difference as well, I'm guessing. And certainly, the lack of contact maybe because of the thickness with the iron could have impacted that at some level. But I definitely liked the needles on the iron soaked paper. It's so much fun to think about ways in which you can interact with your local environment and this is yet another fairly simple way to capture a slice of natural color and the plant matter in places that you visit. So. Next time on Color Quest, to be honest with you, I don't know where I'm going to be. So let's see where the wind takes me, but you do know that you will find me here on Friday. Have a great week. Look at the silk now. Let's see, does it work better over here?